future me wants to tell the past me that after having dealt now with a 20 foot boat, 24 foot boat, 33 foot boat, and now even 40 feet, if you have to DIY, if you have to do it yourself, you're not gonna have a team of people helping you with the physical labor, doing it on a micro budget, this is going to be the single most difficult challenge you have ever undertaken. Maybe we're gonna need a smaller boat. Exactly one out of the 125 days spent in the boatyard, I managed to take off for a holiday, which you will see in this video. If you joined us last video, you'll know that white powders and mystery materials are a reoccurring theme here at the boatyard. We're still finding creative ways to test the trashed radar reflector material using some OSFO to determine whether or not it was filled with chalk. Okay, nothing. I don't think it's chalk. What is the chalk? That's see, this is a, this. This contains a lot of calcium, calcium carbonate. It's, a, it's in fact it neutralizes the acid pretty quick. It stops fizzing because it's a, it's a very strong base. That's the coral. It's weird how this is not reacting to it at all, getting zero reaction. That's kind of weird. We had some great comments on the video, folks trying to help us to determine what the white powder was, but the truth is, is that we haven't come to a conclusion on the matter. Today was moving day. Well, not to somewhere very far. We only needed the boat to be raised about 10 centimeters or a foot higher, and for the weight to be lifted off the keel so that we could properly get in under it. Because of course, also if you saw our last video, the keel desperately needed some love and care. I've been doing a whole lot of fiberglassing, but nothing quite as large scale as I would need to begin doing on the keel. I needed to prepare to lay up some really large sheets of fiberglass. We had already prepped the sides of the keel by grinding, sanding, osphoing, and barrier coating it, but it was time now to lightly sand and fill in the craters with thickened epoxy. Now we wanted to seal the keel with fiberglass to really stop that breakdown of the iron exterior. It was previously covered in a gray thickened polyester material that failed and was no longer keeping the seawater out. I worked really hard to make sure that there were no bubbles or air pockets between the fiberglass and the surface of the keel. On top of the fiberglass, more layers of thickened epoxy to try and smooth it out as much as we could afford to. Because the boat had been lifted to work on the keel, we were also able to move the stands to get in under the spots of the hull that had not been worked on at all yet. So I repeated the process again, sanding, hammering out the osmosis, eventually fairing and painting the barrier coat on. And I was quite impressed with the robustness of the Seahawk Tough Stuff Barrier Coat. The travel lift had made its mark on the already painted hull, but it had not rubbed off the paint at all. All the spots where the stands had been were ready to sand.
I was also simultaneously doing the similar job of sanding and epoxying the rudder. The plan was to have the entire hull, minus only the very bottom of the keel, completely ready for final painting before Robbie arrived back again from his work. The instructions of the Tough Stuff barrier coat were to sand the surface before applying anti-fouling if you were not able to paint again within 24 hours. So I prepped the barrier coat surface as well. It's been quite frustrating not being able to enjoy or to share a lot of the things to do and places to eat around Progresso. My yard neighbor and I did manage to get out to Eladio's on the beach one time. This is the restaurant next to the famous Long Pier and right out on Progresso's quaint tourist waterfront. We're at the famous Eladio's where you can simply order one of their drinks and they bring out to you free plates of food, a variety of snacks and tacos, which seem to be different from day to day. I'm jealous, you, it comes with a popsicle. <laughs> <laughs> they, bring, they bring a bunch of snacks. Look at that. Fish. We have a little bit of hot dog. We have potato. I'm gonna eat some of that. This is squid apparently. And this is bread and dips I'm going to try. Tacos. Muchos tacos, muchos tacos para ella. <laughs> I think something in the end not beef. I'll taste, I'll taste them. These tacos look like they're eggs. Mm. Robbie and I are really thankful to our boat neighbors, Daisy and Ray, who let us use their motorbike a whole bunch, because along with the other difficulties of getting work done in the boatyard, it would have been impossible to travel around daily. They also have a gargantuan boat project ahead of them, but cruisers do what they can to help each other whenever. As mentioned before, I managed to get out on exactly one trip with them and a couple of other local expats to some nearby cenotes. Good morning! We all split the cost of transportation, which sent us down a jungle road just outside of the big town of Merida and through some quiet towns before arriving at the Palapa named Santa Barbara. Admission was about $18 and would include some food later on as well. Visitors can choose to ride the train or bicycle up the path to visit the cenotes on site. I'm not too fond of horse rides, but I do love bicycling, so the choice was easy. <laughs> and I've got the life jacket on. This particular park requires life jackets inside all of the cenotes and also a shower before entering the water. A great way to wake up before the beginning of your swimming day. Like many cenotes, this one is located underground, so down we climbed into the cave. Enjoyment of this kind of subterranean spa depends entirely on whether you consider floating in a dimly lit chamber under spindly tree roots to be relaxing or terrifying. Riding on a bicycle allowed me to choose the speed at which I traveled up the path to the next swim spot. This one with a wider entrance where the ancient cave roof had collapsed down through the center of it, letting in light to illuminate the natural beauty and the stalactites. Thank you. 
Last visit involved a grand stairway down into another open roof cenote, this one deeper than the last. And this one with a little more fish swimming around, which again can either induce extreme relaxation in floating here or perhaps it could trigger anxiety in other people. Personally, my enjoyment of cenotes flows from learning to let go of unfounded worries. Just let the water and tranquility wash over you. <laughs> you look bored in my film. harsh midday sun now. It felt great to have gone for the extremely refreshing dip. I felt about a thousand percent better and completely opposite to how I usually feel in the boatyard at this time of the day. We even got a plate of food each included in the entry price. And everyone now is feeling sleepy and at ease as we stopped by some Mayan ruins on the way back. Just at the sides of the road, driving through small towns, you can encounter ancient Mayan buildings here in Mexico. These ones had an old church built just across the street, of course, and a tin roof to protect the current archaeological investigation going on near the top of the pyramid. Last stop before getting back to the boatyard was the local brewery. They were in the process of getting ready to start brewing again after some sort of hiatus, but it was interesting to see that there are some small breweries that do exist here in the Yucatan Peninsula, besides just the big brand name factories. The entire day cost a whopping 1,200 pesos, or about $60 total after all the tips. When Robbie returned, he was stuck with the most terrible job of sliding in under the keel. After some weeks of slowly chipping and grinding away at the really tenacious rust and scale, it was finally time to spray and rinse several times with the Osvo. Now together we would attempt to epoxy and fiberglass the very bottom using the same procedure as I did before to cover the sides. Our bulbous bottom keel has a surprisingly wide footprint, so we used up every last piece of fiberglass cloth and many liters of epoxy to cover the exposed metal and to fill in the ugly craters. We didn't want 
to spend too much time, material, and cost sealing up the, the keel, but it ends up that uh, I can basically see my reflection in it. <laughs> Hopefully that will keep the rust out. It's a little bit of a test. We're gonna see next time we pull her out of the water how well it has kept out the rust. Next video, the bottom is basically all set to paint and to plunge back into the water. But hold up, we still have an entire mass to put back up before calling ourselves a sailboat again. Join us then for the misadventures in trying to sail an old boat on a legend. <laughs>